Did you know that the number of undiscovered species is astronomically high? and that an estimated 85% of land creatures and 90% of sea creatures are completely unknown to us. But that's not all. 99.9% .9 of all animals that have ever lived on Earth have now also become extinct. But sometimes, and this is the fascinating thing, the creatures declared dead are in fact still very much alive. And this applies not only to animals that were declared extinct only a few decades ago, but also to bizarre primeval creatures whose era seemed to have ended millions of years ago. In 1938, it seemed clear, and the coalescent was officially considered extinct. And not just since yesterday either, since its existence had only been proven by fossils up to that point, researchers assumed that this primeval fish had disappeared from the face of the Earth 66 million years ago. But in the same breath, the experts also knew that the aquatic creature had been populating the world's oceans more than 360 million years ago and that this makes it over 290 million years older than the world-famous Tyrannosaurus rex. But the Kolenkanth was also of particular importance for a completely different reason. Because the development from fins to legs could be traced on its body, it was also considered the outstanding missing link between fish and terrestrial vertebrates, and thus as a representative of that line of development from which humans ultimately emerged. And yet, at the time, no one would have thought it possible for this prime example of evolution was in fact still among us. But then, on December 22, 1938, a fishing boat off the coast of South Africa made a bizarre catch and brought to light a creature from a depth of about 70 meters that no one could identify. The strange animal had a body length of 1.5 meters and weighed a good 50 kilograms. But by the time it was brought to the surface, it was already dead from the unusual pressure loss. But what kind of animal could it be? Well, that was exactly the question a certain Marjorie Courtney Latimer asked herself when she took a closer look at this strange outgrowth of the ocean. In fact, the then director of the East London City Museum of Maritime Sciences suspected right from the start that the fishermen might have caught a revolutionary sensation in their nets. And as we know today, she was right. First, however, Courtney Latimer made a sketch of the animal and sent it to Professor James Smith of Rhodes University in Gromstown. And indeed, he is said to have almost had a heart attack when he saw the picture. After all, he only knew about a fish without fins and without scales, and for him, there was no question that the sketch shows nothing other than a koa length. We probably don't need to emphasize at this point that with the circumstances embodied a small scientific miracle, and ultimately, the living fossil was named after its discoverer, Latimeria calumine. Well, the term living fossil is not quite correct, because as already mentioned, the koa length was already dead at the time of its discovery. And indeed, it would take another 14 years before a second specimen of this primeval relic was discovered 3,000 kilometers away. To be precise, the find was recorded between the Comoros Islands and Madagascar, but to the amazement of the scientists, it had long been known to the locals there. They called it Combessa and didn't really have much use for it as it didn't taste particularly good. And yet the representative of the species, which has since been known as the Comoro Coalenkanth, was no longer alive when it was pulled out of the water. The Discovery of the First Living Specimen Nevertheless, it was obvious that there were still living Coalenkanths out there. However, it would take several decades before this suspicion could be substantiated with hard evidence. We have to thank biology student Olaf Reinecke and the submersible pilot Jürgen Schauer for this. On January 17, 1987, they boarded the research submarine GEO and headed into the deep waters off the Comoros. And sensationally, they were actually to look straight into the face of one of these bizarre giant fish and document their unique encounter on camera. Of course, the groundbreaking footage then went around the world, just like the peculiar finds that were made in 1997 and 1998. In these cases, the Kolokenths were not found in the depths of the sea, but were offered for sale at the Manado Tawa Fish Market in Indonesia. Remarkably, the dead animals were offered for sale around 10,000 kilometers from the Comoros. But what has happened since then? 
Well, basically, the prehistoric fish includes the Camoro and Mandaro Coquilens, two known recent, that is, still living, species. From a purely fossil point of view, however, there are about 70 species in 28 genera. But are these also our direct ancestors? As already mentioned, this was the assumption of earlier experts, but in the meantime, this assessment has changed somewhat. Although the Colacanth is still considered a so-called bridge animal, which embodies the transition from one species to another, this does not mean that it was also the one that carried life on land. From a purely evolutionary point of view, we are dealing here with a kind of prototype, more precisely with a fish whose pelvic and pectoral fins already resemble the arms or legs of terrestrial vertebrates in their bone structure. This anatomical construction was to lead many millions of years later to the animals leaving the sea and conquering less wet climes. At the same time, however, it is in the nature of things that a creature that has been part of the animal face of the earth for so long is also accompanied by some fundamental questions. This applies, in particular, to how the Coquilinth managed to survive to this day. After all, as mentioned at the beginning, 99.9% .9 of all species that have ever lived did not succeed in doing so. So what does science have to say about the extraordinary survival skills of the Coquilinth? Well, the somewhat surprising answer is that researchers have no idea. In fact, from an objective point of view, it even seems more likely that the Coquilinth is not a particularly skilled survivor at all. What we do know, however, is that the ancient fish do have a special hunting behavior. In the late 1990s, a team of researchers from the Max Planck Institute in Siwesen, Bavaria, succeeded in tagging some colicants in the waters around Indonesia with tracking devices. And since then, we have known that the nocturnal hunters do not catch their prey as fast as an arrow like sharks, nor do they lurk and wait in a hiding place. Instead, they simply swim straight ahead at a leisurely pace until a victim strays directly in front of their mouth. Anything swimming past on the right or left is simply ignored. But what may sound a little inefficient at first glance is in fact extremely expedient. After all, the Colacanth uses very little energy with this particular hunting pattern, and consequently has to consume less food to meet its daily needs. In an environment as extreme as it is low in competition as the deep sea, this practice is perfectly adequate for long-term survival. How much does the Colacanth still have in common with its ancestors? In addition to the as yet unresolved question of survival, there is also the question of whether the Colacanth really embodies a living fossil in the classical sense. In other words, is the fish today still the same as its ancestors that roamed the oceans millions of years ago? Or has it also evolved over time? The latter is actually the case. Even though the last known evolutionary step of the Colacanth occurred between 2 and 11 million years ago, it was during this phase that the Comoro Colacanths separated from the Indonesian Mondo Colacanths. But given the fish's long life history, you might think that nothing could truly shake its existence. In reality, however, the opposite is true. As I said, we only know of two recent species these days, compared to 70 fossils. The researchers assume that only one of nine Colacanth families has survived. But who knows? Maybe there are other representatives of these primeval fish out there that we just haven't caught yet, and that one day will lead to another entry being crossed off the list of extinct animals. But we should not forget that the Colacanth is by no means the only animal to have experienced this so-called Lazarus effect. The Galapagos giant tortoise Calonoidus nigra fantasticus, which was thought to have been extinct for more than 100 years, can tell us a thing or two about it. The same applies to the Lagomera giant lizard, the Cocoan peccary, and the Bavarian pine vole. But it gets even more exciting when the world of supposedly extinct animals touches on the world of fabulous myths and legends. The indigenous Cario tribe has long told the story of a monster that roams the Brazilian jungle at night. Known as the Mapanguari, the creature is said to give blood-curdling screams and sometimes even hunt humans. And if rainforest researchers like David Oren have their way, this gruesome legend could actually be true. In this case, however, Mapanaguari would not be a mythical monster, 
but a giant sloth that was thought to be extinct, which has somehow managed to survive to this day in the rainforest thicket. And so that you can find our videos in the jungle of YouTube, you can now simply click on the thumbs up and subscribe. We'd love for you to join our community so you never miss a post from us again. See you soon!